Fast Fashion Equals Fast Pollution by Emily, Jess, Elena, and Molly. Fast fashion is clothing that is rapidly produced by mass market retailers in response to the latest trends. The clothes are made with low quality materials such as synthetic fabric, which is designed to quickly break. The low quality clothes are then sold at low prices to the public and increase overconsumption. Since the clothing follows trends and are seasonal, after the season is over, they are thrown away in crowd landfills. Once in landfills, the fabric, which is made of plastic, can take 500 years to decompose. Fast fashion is a relevant issue because the production of fast fashion releases large amounts of greenhouse gases, which are the main cause of climate change. This leads to increasing ocean temperatures, mass changes in weather, and the melting of ice caps. This is also relevant because fast fashion raises ethical issues on the requirements for PPE and safety regulations because workers are heavily exposed to dangerous gases daily. The EPA released an overview of the greenhouse gas production in 2019. Fast fashion is a significant contributor to global carbon emissions at 10% of the total emissions. This is more than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. Fast fashion is becoming an increasingly relevant issue because it's getting increasingly popular. Since 2000, the amount of clothing produced has doubled from 50 billion items to 100 billion items produced per year. Since more sustainable options are expensive and as a result inaccessible to most, fast fashion offers a cheap and quick option for trendy clothes. There are many fast fashion brands. One in particular named Shein has become very popular in the last two to three years. Shein hauls have become a big trend on social media platforms like TikTok. People will buy hundreds of dollars worth of fast fashion clothing and make a video showing it all. As of October 14th, 2021, the hashtag Shein haul has over 3.6 billion views. The production, manufacturing, and transportation processes behind fast fashion produce harmful greenhouse gases each year, including carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and sulfur dioxide. This is because the synthetic fiber that makes the clothing is polyester, acrylic, and nylon, which are made from fossil fuels and require more energy to produce than natural fibers. The factories that produce these fibers also tend to be in countries such as China and India, which are currently heavily reliant on coal power. For the experiment, we have chosen to look at the emissions of a fast fashion brand, Shein, and a sustainable brand called Reformation. Shein is a fast fashion e-commerce company founded in 2008, which has the philosophy that everyone can enjoy the beauty of fashion. The primary focus is women's fashion and accessories, but it also offers men's and children's clothing. The clothing price ranges from $1 to $40. There are many controversies surrounding the company, such as the poor quality of clothing, sweatshop workers, and child labor. Reformation is a sustainable clothing company founded in 2009. It was originally a vintage thrift shop, but now they design and sell clothing. Their mission is to bring sustainable fashion to everyone. They are 100% carbon neutral, use 100% recycled leather to make shoes, and every product has a page to show how much carbon dioxide, water, and waste you are saving by purchasing their products. Every year they post a sustainability report to show the progress they have made to increase the sustainability of their company. research question for this experiment is how do the air emissions differ between a fast fashion company and a more sustainable company? Our hypothesis is that the fast fashion company will have more greenhouse gas emissions than the more sustainable company. In order to perform this experiment, multiple steps are needed. The first step is to find the location of production for each company. The way the company emits their pollutants and the local air quality regulations also need to be known. Once in the correct location, the wind speed, weather, and temperature need to be recorded. The three measuring instruments are used to measure the pollutant concentrations inside each company. 
This will show if the emissions affect the workplace. The pollutants will then be measured outside each company and downwind. The downwind data will show if the emissions affect the nearby communities. Sheen has factories in Guangzhou, China. However, they aren't transparent about their manufacturing practices, so the exact factory location is unknown. They are most likely using a subcontractor to produce their clothes so they don't have to report any information on their supply chain. Reformation, a company known for its transparency in manufacturing, also has a manufacturing facility in the same province as Guangzhou, which is Guangdong. They have five factories there, but Dongguang is only an hour from the town where the Xin factory is located, so this will be our location for the Reformation factory. Guangdong is known as the manufacturing hub of China. Guangdong has many manufacturing facilities that can leave a haze over the city. Also, over 70% of companies failed to meet regulations in 2017, according to the Ministry of Environmental Protection. For this experiment, we need to know how the companies emit pollutants. For this experiment, we will assume that the pollutants are being released by stack emissions. The local air quality regulations must be noted for reference. China has ambient air quality standards, and Class II standards are applied to urban areas, so that is what is used in this experiment. The annual SO2 standard is 60 micrograms per meters cubed, and the annual NO2 standard is 40 micrograms per meters cubed. For our experiment, we're going to be using three different measuring instruments. The ENDA 7000, the high range ultraviolet fluorescence sulfur dioxide analyzer, and the gas chromatography with electron capture detector. The first instrument for our experiment is the ENDA 7000. It's made by a company called Hariva. It actually measures the concentrations of multiple different gases, including nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, oxygen, and ammonia. And it is a stat gas analyzer. However, for our experiment, we are only going to be using this instrument to measure carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. This instrument uses two different methods to measure these two different gases, non-dispersive infrared for carbon dioxide and non-dispersive ultraviolet for sulfur dioxide. Non-dispersive infrared, or NDIR, is one of the most reliable methods of measuring carbon dioxide. It has a high level of accuracy with a fast response time. This method uses an infrared source or an infrared lamp, a light tube, a light filter, and an infrared detector. The lamp directs waves of the light through the tube that contains a sample of the air you're testing. The light then goes through the light filter and the amount of infrared light that went through is measured. The infrared light that comes across from the lamp is very close to the absorption band of carbon dioxide. Because of this, as the infrared light passes through, some of those wavelengths will be absorbed by the carbon dioxide molecules. The amount of light that is measured by the filter then can then be used to calculate the number of CO2 molecules in that sample of air. Non-dispersive ultraviolet, or NDUV, is very similar to the method of using NDIR, except that this method uses ultraviolet light, which is, which is absorbed by sulfur dioxide, instead of the infrared light. Then, the amount of the ultraviolet light that's absorbed by the sulfur dioxide is used to calculate the number of SO2 molecules in the sample of air that you're testing. Our next tool is the High Range Ultraviolet Fluorescence Sulfur Dioxide Analyzer. This measures ambient air by drawing it through the sample inlet and then the air goes through a pulsing UV fluorescence detection system. 
Sulfur dioxide measurements are based on the fact that sulfur dioxide absorbs ultraviolet light at 214 nanometers. Then that absorbed ultraviolet energy excites the outer electrons to the next state. Once these electrons return to their original state, photons are emitted at a wavelength of 390 nanometers. Light from decaying sulfur dioxide is detected by the photomultiplier tube, or the PMT, and is then converted to an electrical signal. The electronic system uses this electric signal and converts it to more easily understandable units for concentration like parts per billion. The sensitivity level is generally 2.0 parts per billion, and this machine must be checked every day and have a zero span cycle. The last instrument we will be using for our experiment is the gas chromatography with electron capture detector. This is the most widely used analytical method for measuring nitrous oxide. Air samples are collected with an automatic chamber system. The gas chamber system is hooked up to the gas chromatography instrument. The gas chamber has gas headspace injections that are 0.5 to 5 milliliters running through it. The purpose of the injections is to treat water vapor and carbon dioxide in the samples because water vapor and carbon dioxide affect the accuracy of the nitrous oxide measurements. The gas headspace injections are Porapac Q and Hazacep Q. Every three to four samples, a reference standard must be run to correct for drift error. It needs to be calibrated once a week, can be run at emission stacks, has a precision of 30 parts per billion, can run unmanned for years, and takes four to six minutes per sample. Our data will be analyzed using Excel and graphs. The data collected by each instrument will be recorded and then converted to appropriate units such as parts per billion. The concentrations of all pollutants at each source will then be compiled into an Excel document. Three bar graphs will be made from the data. One bar graph will be for the pollutants inside the company and the other two graphs will be for outside and downwind of the company. The bar graphs will have two colors of bars per pollutant that represent the two companies. There will be a total of three sets of bars per graph to show the different pollutants that were analyzed. The SO2, CO2, and NO2 concentrations for each company will then be compared. It is important to make sure that the results are statistically significant when analyzing and comparing the data. Conclusions can then be drawn about how air emissions differ between the sustainable and fast fashion companies. It is expected that the concentration of each pollutant will be higher for sheen than for reformation. Here, we can see an example of what one of the bar graphs would look like. The colored bar for the fast fashion company, Sheen, is higher than the bar for reformation for every pollutant that was analyzed. The results of this experiment show that there are many implications for the stakeholders involved. The world population would be impacted due to the contribution that fast fashion has to climate change. Greenhouse gas emissions cause increased ocean temperatures, natural disasters, and the melting of ice caps. Climate change is also responsible for many floods, droughts, and wildfires. The textile factory workers would be impacted due to the many ethical issues surrounding labor and fast fashion. The continuous exposure to harmful chemicals and pollutants will negatively impact the health of the workers, especially due to the higher emission rates. NO2 exposure has been linked to long-term respiratory issues and SO2 exposure has been linked to weakened lung function. The fashion industry as a whole will also be impacted from the results of this experiment because with more research, regulations might be implemented. These regulations would impact the manufacturing and production processes of every company in the fashion industry. In conclusion, the results of this experiment show that our hypothesis is confirmed. Fast fashion companies like Sheen emit more greenhouse gas emissions than more sustainable companies like Reformation. Fast fashion companies can negatively impact the health of the workers, the environment, and the world. Therefore, people should be more conscious about where they purchase their clothes and how much they are buying. Do you really need 20 sweatshirts and 50 pairs of shoes?